In 1998, something happened at Liverpool Football Club. The doors to the purpose-built academy facility in Kirkby were first opened. And as they say, the rest is history. The club can take pride in being among the best when it comes to producing the best talents the world has ever seen. We take a look at the finest players to ever emerge from the famed academy and where they are now. Has there been a finer or a more influential footballer to put on the famous red shirt than Gerard? Plenty will debate whether he is Liverpool's greatest ever player, but he is without doubt the greatest academy product. Gerard joined Liverpool at the age of eight before making his senior debut in 1998. By the time he played his last game for the club 17 years later, he had made 710 appearances, scored 185 goals and won nine major titles and also represented England 114 times without mentioning countless individual awards. Some may view Kenny Dalglish as Liverpool's greatest player, but the Scot was playing during an era where he was surrounded by similarly talented players. Gerrard, on the other hand, almost single-handedly dragged Liverpool through the noughties, at times surrounded by rebellious players in the dressing room. The memories are countless for the former club captain, who later returned to the club as U18's coach. Despite his coaching career being a mixed bag, he is seen by many as a future Liverpool manager Manager, perhaps a successor to Jorgen Klopp. He currently manages Al Etifak in Saudi Pro League. Arguably, no Liverpool player before or since have evoked such fond memories or adored by the Anfield faithfuls as one Robbie Fowler. Fowler announced his arrival on the big stage by scoring on his debut against Fulham in a League Cup clash in 1993, before netting five in the return leg a fortnight later in his first match at Anfield. Some introduction, huh? It was the start of something special for the teenager, who was 18 at the time. He went on to attain legendary levels in the seasons to follow from hitting a five-minute hat-trick against Arsenal in a season he scored 31, which he followed by hitting 36 the following campaign, and then 31, he passed the 30-goal mark in three of his first four seasons in a Liverpool shirt. He thrilled the Anfield fans with his ability to produce finishes, and not just finishes, but about any type of finish. It's for this that he remains arguably the most clinical finisher in Liverpool's history, a true goalscorer. A serious knee injury in 1998, though, aged just 22 would eventually slow his rise. I could have gone on to become the best in the world, he said in an interview, and it's certainly true. Despite the injury setbacks, he still managed to score in both the League Cup and the UEFA Cup finals in 2001, as Liverpool won a remarkable treble of cup competitions. With little going on for him, he left for Leeds the following season. Fowler would however make an emotional return to Anfield in 2006. He was greeted to a roar like no other before when he made his second debut against Birmingham. No doubt, he will remain one of Anfield's favourite sons. By all means, 183 goals and 369 appearances at Liverpool in his two spells is a remarkable feat. No player in Liverpool's recent history epitomises the spirit and attitude of the city like Carragher. In the famous images as Liverpool first lifted the Champions League trophy in Istanbul, Carragher is nowhere to be seen. He was at the back of the podium, struggling with a cramp, and that sunned the night. He was a key player at the back, not only as Liverpool overcame Milan in the final, but through the campaign, and his fighting spirit was immensely pivotal. Carragher was the ultimate utility player. He first came into the scene playing as a striker before dropping back into midfield. He won the famous 2001 treble playing as a left back and moved across to right back after that before emerging as one of the best centre backs in Europe under Rafael Benitez. It's no surprise that he sits second behind Callaghan on the Reds' all time appearance list, having played 737 times in a 17 year Reds career. He was a key figure for Liverpool until he hung up his boots in 2013. The standing ovation he received that day said it all and many feel perhaps he retired too early. He's currently one of the best TV pundits in the business. Many
Many will remember his scoured relationship with the club somewhat, but a young Owen was the real deal when he burst onto the scene in the late 1990s, just a few months before Gerrard made his debut. Owen chose the pen, scoring the famous goal for England in a World Cup match against Argentina, and he became one of the most sought-after players in England and Europe. He went on to light the Anfield Stadium, and his record at the club remains phenomenal, scoring on his debut as a 17-year-old and going on to net 23 goals in each of his first two full seasons with the Reds. But his move to Spanish giants Real Madrid and subsequent spells at Newcastle and rivals Manchester United tarnished his reputation at the Merseyside club and it meant that he will never be held in the same regards as other club legends. Despite all of that, he still ranks ninth on the list of Liverpool's highest scorers, having scored 158 goals in 297 appearances and remains the last Englishman to win the European Footballer of the Year award in 2001. Since his retirement, he's become a racehorse breeder and owner and regularly features as a sports pundit and commentator. It's easy to associate Sterling with Manchester City more than Liverpool, and rightly so. After all, he never got to play at Anfield for long. But the winger, currently at Chelsea, is one of the most talented players to have graduated from Liverpool's famed academy in recent years. He was first spotted at QPR before Liverpool signed him as a 15-year-old in 2010. He quickly established himself, making his professional debut just two years later, and he instantly became a fan favourite. The presence of Daniel Sturridge and Luis Suarez made them a threatening trio, one to be reckoned with. Everything was going right for Sterling until his rising fame somehow turned his head and he quickly became the most loathed person at Anfield. Sterling rejected an improved contract and instead chose to join rivals Manchester City in 2015 in a £50 million deal, a then record fee for an English player. Regardless of the unpleasant departure, Sterling became an absolute success at City, playing a vital role in their conquests. And after seven trophy-laden seasons, in Manchester, where he scored 131 goals in 339 appearances and won four Premier League titles, four League Cups and the FA Cup, he left in 2022 and joined Chelsea. Now you understand why Sterling's memories of Anfield will never be joyous. His story has just begun, and by the time he finishes, he will undoubtedly be one of Liverpool's best ever. Alexander Arnold is without a doubt the jewel of Liverpool's Kirkby Academy, the poster boy for Liverpool's Academy since the turn of the millennium, and one whom all future Academy graduates will be measured against. He joins in the clubs under 16s and under 18s. He first started as a midfielder and then transitioned to the right back. But since making his full debut for Liverpool in 2016, he's developed into the ultimate modern and a fullback, a mesmerizing passer of the ball, a prolific creator, and so good at reading the game. He's already in the club's top 60 appearances makers by the age of 25 and has won every trophy possible, and you have a feeling there will be more to come, a scouser who has truly shown what is possible. Without a doubt, one of the club's most underrated players. McManaman was, however, a key player in the 90s for Liverpool, carrying the club so much on his shoulders alongside Fowler. The classy attacking midfielder made his debut under Kenny Dalglish and later developed into a key player under Graeme Souness. He was a key figure as Liverpool lifted the FA Cup in 1992 and was also named Man of the Match in the 1995 League Cup final win, which came under Roy Evans. His relationship with Fowler, on and off the pitch, was key for Liverpool's success. McManaman was an architect, a selfless ball-carrying creator, while Fowler was a devastatingly effective finisher. McManaman, just like Owen, would eventually sour his relationship with some fans after leaving for Real Madrid in 1999 on a free transfer. On personal level though, the move to Spain was a good one as he went on to win the Champions League twice, scoring in the 2000 final and became one of England's most successful footballing exports. He went on to play two seasons at Manchester Manchester City before retiring in 2005. He currently works as a sports co-commentator and acts as a La Liga ambassador.
This list would be incomplete without mentioning Ian Callaghan, Liverpool's all-time record appearance maker, a World Cup winner with England, and an absolute gentleman. The Englishman played, featured for Liverpool between 1960 and 1978, playing 857 times, a record that might never be surpassed ever. He played a key part as a Liverpool under Bill Shankly, won the second division title in 1962, and was also instrumental as the Reds lifted the FA Cup for the first time three years later. By the time he hung up his boots, he had collected two European Cups, two UEFA Cups, five First Division winners' medals and two FA Cups, and was also named Footballer of the Year in 1974. No doubt, a relentless professional and one of Anfield's true greats. Nothing gets a supporter as his pulse racing like a homegrown hero, and Liverpool, like many top clubs, have had plenty of those down the years, and without a doubt, there will be more coming.